Good morning, everybody. Welcome to DCC Daily. This is our Monday through Friday 15-minute program of information and encouragement for our DCC family and anybody else that cares to join us uh, just to keep us connected during this COVID-19 crisis. Uh, the photo of the day we have today is from Patsy Lovelady. Uh, Patsy sent us a photo she took of Merrimere Falls and uh, just such a beautiful place out there. So Patsy, thank you. Uh, if you have pictures you'd like to send in, could be a scenic, could be a favorite child or grandchild, a craft you've been working on, a pet that you love, uh, send those to me, tim at dcchurch.org, and we'll try to work those in in the days ahead. I've been talking this week about round to it projects. Uh, those are those things you've been putting off for a long time because you were just too busy, and now you're not too busy, and you're getting around to it. Uh, if you could send me a note this week and let me know some of those round to it's that you're doing during this time of being stuck at home, uh, we will try to proclaim your accomplishments next week and applaud the effort. Coming up on Friday, speaking of round to it, I'm going to tell you my big scare when I was working as a janitor at the Round To It headquarters. Yes, it is true, there actually was a company. That was the name of the company. They produced all kinds of little knick-knack stuff with that Round To It insignia on it. Uh, I cleaned their building while I was going to graduate school. And one of the scaredest moments of my life, is that even a word? Anyway, scared myself good happened in the parking lot of the Round To It headquarters. And Friday, I will tell you what happened. Uh, announcements. Again, Easter is coming right around the corner and uh, we're going to be starting a new teaching series on Easter called Breakfast with Jesus, Ask Him Anything. I hope that you will invite some friends to tune in and join us. And uh, don't forget the project I've been talking about. We want to get a bunch of pictures of little kids enjoying Easter. And so your kids, grandkids, if you can send us some pictures, we're going to put that together and do something special with it for our Easter service. I do need those this week, so please send those to me right away if you're going to send something to me. Uh, also, as I've been mentioning, it looks like our service is going to be broadcast starting on Easter on our local public access channel, channel 21. Uh, they have very graciously reached out to local churches and invited us to put our services online with them uh, just as a way to encourage and reach out to our community. So we're going to take them up on that offer and that will be starting on Easter Sunday on Channel 21. Other news, don't forget we have the new DCC switchboard link at the top of our website. So if you go to our website at dcchurch.org, at the top, you will see this banner for the switchboard. And if you go to the switchboard, you will find links there for all the different ways that you can get connected with us online. That includes everything from getting to our online directory, DC Connect, to online giving, our Facebook page, Right Now Media, free conference calling applications. So we've tried to give you one centralized place that you can go to to get connected with the church office and with each other. Coming up this weekend, Sunday worship again will be at 10 a.m. Uh, we're going to have a kids chat. Stacy Vandeway and her boys will be doing that for us. We'll also be wrapping up our study of the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 12. And then Sunday evening, we're going to have a prayer time from 6.45 to 7.15. Okay, a uh, thought for the day. This comes from Psalm 42, verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. I don't know what kind of turmoil you may be feeling inside right now, or how cast down you may be feeling. Um, I know those feelings. I've been in those times. But here's a reminder. We put our hope in God. And I like how the psalmist says that I shall again praise him. Sometimes we go through periods where it is hard to praise, at least from the heart, to emotionally feel it and enter into it because our hearts are cast down. They are heavy. And so David doesn't just start there. He starts with put your hope in God. Hold on to him. And, and one of the things that you know is the day will come. 
the day will come that again you will praise him fully and deeply from the heart because, David says, my salvation is from God. I hope that you will be able to put your hope in him today, whatever it is that you're facing. Well, we have a special guest again today. We're going to go to that interview now. Our guest this morning is Sean Stanton, and uh, Sean is our almost new pastor of adult ministries. Uh, he'll be stepping into Wayne's job when uh, Wayne retires here in just a few weeks. But uh, you're already getting ramped up with small group stuff, aren't you? Yeah, there's plenty of need there. Uh, it looks quite different than I thought it was going to look uh, transitioning, but it's still plenty to do. It's still exciting. Um, so it is kind of interesting thinking about small groups in a time when we're all supposed to be isolated. Uh, what, what can small groups be doing right now? Can they do anything? Well, small groups are all about community, really. And so how do we still operate in community when we can't be together? And unfortunately, that's going to mean a lot of technology. And uh, I think that's ironic because most of us have always tried to shy away or even discourage a bunch of technology. But right now, it's an important part of our life, whether we like it or not. But uh, just some suggestions on staying um, connected. You know, I'm going to start with the simple stuff. We can still mail. Mail is still operating. Uh, getting a card or just some sort of um, communication that way. It feels great. I mean, we at the church, the staff at the church have received some cards and it's been really fun and encouraging. Um, the next thing is a phone call. Phone calls are still a great way to hear people's voices. You can check in on them. Um, it, it takes that loneliness away as well. <clears throat> so those are both really simple ways we can still stay in touch. Uh, and then even on our phones, we can do FaceTime, which gives us a camera view of the people that we're talking to. So that's, that's even better. So that gives you two households that can connect. We like to think of it, it's just not one person per device, too. You can have multiple people on a device. So it allows you to connect with more people. It's great. Um, and then we have conference calling, which is similar to the um, FaceTime, but it allows for even more people to jump on board and, and talk. And then video conferences um, are also a really good way. And on our switchboard, on our DC Connect, we have um, links that will take you to those uh, platforms, both for free conference call, FCC and Zoom. So um, Zoom is really working well for a lot of people. It gives you the opportunity for video, audio, chat, even screen sharing, um, which can really be great for studies and uh, just sharing photographs or whatever you would like to do. It's, it's a really great option. So what does it take for someone if they've never done this before? And let's say they want to do Zoom. Uh, how hard is it to get that set up? It's really not that difficult. Um, and again, on our switchboard, there's links. Um, and that's being updated all the time. I've actually been getting ready to just put the final touches on a couple of tutorials that even simplify it more um, with links on there. So it's free, both both uh, free conference call and Zoom is free. And to get set up for it, it's just really pretty straightforward. And myself and others are very willing to uh, walk you through it if, if you still need help. Yeah, I think one of the small differences between the two platforms, I agree that I think Zoom is a higher quality uh, conferencing platform. Uh, free conference call is, it seems a little easier if somebody wants to join just by telephone because right. you can, you can use a landline for that. 
you can use a landline, your cell phone, you don't need to be on a computer. Zoom is more geared toward you're on your computer and getting in. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't need a smart device of any kind to still participate with the free conference call. Your host will need to have a computer or a, or a smartphone. But other than that, you, I know it's something else that you've looked at, and maybe you could talk to people about for just a moment, is a good phone conference, video conference etiquette. Because if no one's done this before, there are a few simple ground rules that make the experience a lot better. What, what are maybe a couple things that will help people have a successful conference call? So when you're on these chats or these phone calls or these um, video conferences. It's just important to be courteous in your communication. Um, they are, they can be, they can tend to be very uh, loud and messy and there's delays and all that kind of thing. So some things to really be thinking about is really, unless you're the one speaking, try to be as quiet as possible, which also includes any noise that might be going on around you in your house. Uh, TVs, um, dishwasher, you know, all those noises travel really well right through the microphones on these devices and just really make a lot of um, audio clutter. You also have the benefit of a mute button and that's also a really good tool to use when you're simply just listening. It just makes for a much cleaner experience for everybody that is on. Uh, another thing that really works well in group conference calls or uh, video conferencing is to have a bit of a format or agenda maybe sent out um, pre, you know, ahead of time. So those are just a couple of things. Um, I've looked at some really great websites that have more ideas that I will add to the switchboard so you can take a look at those as well. Great. Uh, you know, one little thing that I've noticed that is helpful, especially in video chats, is if people give just a little bit of thought to where they're sitting uh, and how the camera's looking at them. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, if you get a light behind you, like a bright table lamp or something behind you, it will make you look like a really dark shadow and kind of blind the camera and it, it's, not, it's not a good picture to look at. If you just put a little bit of light in front of your face, uh, then it's you know easier for everyone to see. So just a little bit of thought about where you're sitting when you get on the camera can make that a, a good experience as well. Yeah, and, and having your back up against like a window during the daytime is is a really poor uh, option as well because it just washes the whole picture out. Other ideas. Well, I think sometimes we worry about what are we going to say? What's the content going to be? And so um, depending if you're connecting with your small group or just a friend or a family member or, or whatever you're doing, you know, have some ideas going into it. And if you can't think of anything, there's nothing better than sharing a scripture and praying. I mean, that to me is really what's going to get us through this anyways are connecting with God and with others. And so I would just encourage people, especially as things roll on, it's going to get more and more difficult for, for many people. And with isolation and loneliness and economic concerns and, and just simple boredom, people are really going to need the care um, through these mediums. And so I would just really recommend choose one and get the best out of it, get the most out of it. You know, I, I would say too, that whole problem of well, what do I say? Um, asking questions is wonderful. Oftentimes one of the best things we can do is open up an opportunity for someone else to share about what they're thinking, what they're feeling. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we typically don't have problems communicating when we're in the same room together, but there's just something different. And, and honestly, over the last couple of weeks, we've been doing more and more of these 
platforms, the conference calls and the Zooms, and, and, and you do get comfortable with it. I mean, yeah. after a while, it's, it's fine. And it's, there's some, actually some neat parts about being able to communicate this way. So <clears throat> it's definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. I, I had the same experience. The first few of these video conferences I did felt awkward and there were problems, the, the mic was, was giving feedback, and I was trying to figure out how to mute things and how to turn things on. But if you stick with it, you know, you, you do a few sessions, all of a sudden it begins to click, you figure it out, and then it becomes a very enjoyable experience. Yeah, and that reminds me of something too, and, and we'll put this on the um, switchboard, but there's actually a, a place where you can do practice um, meetings, you, you know, they have a place where you just hit practice and they walk you through and you can play with all the little symbols and, and just kind of get comfortable with it for a little while without somebody really being on the other end of it. So yeah. I, I found that was kind of fun and, and helpful. Anything else you'd want to share? Well, I would just, I would just encourage people to be really proactive in, in praying for our church and really asking God to prompt or stir our hearts, maybe about an individual that we hadn't even thought about. Just like if somebody comes to your mind, there's a good, there's a good chance that God's calling you here to, to reach out. So just be mindful of it. Well, speaking of prayer, would you close our time in prayer today? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, what a, what a time to be a follower of you and uh, a servant of you i just ask that uh, that's exactly what we do we serve your interests down here that we are able to connect to still enjoy the community that you have designed and made possible through the blood of your son i thank you that uh, we have such great leaders and great volunteers and so many people out there that are really reaching out and taking care of those people that are in need. So I just thank you as uh, Good Friday approaches and Easter's coming up that we really, really draw on that experience, draw on what Christ did for us. And it prompts us and motivates us to show that kind of love for our church. So I thank you, Father, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. I hope you have a blessed day and we will see you again tomorrow.